from Montreal, Canada's Olympic City. It's the 1985 Gemini Award, honoring the most outstanding in the Canadian Football League. Ladies and gentlemen, from Calais to Cogray, where the excitement of Grey Cup Week reigns supreme, a tradition continues as Gently Canada pays tribute to the most outstanding rookie, most outstanding offensive lineman, most outstanding defensive player, most outstanding Canadian, and the most outstanding player in Canadian professional football. And tonight, the Gently Awards also congratulate the BC Lions and the Hamilton Tiger Cats for making 1985 the year of the cat in Canadian football. And now, meet the CFL stars, the 1985 Gently nominees. For Gently Most Outstanding Rookie Honors, from the West, the BC Lions defensive tackle, Mike Gray. for the Shetley Most Outstanding Offensive Lineman Award. Representing the West, Winnipeg's All-Star Offensive Guard, Nick Bastia. From the East, former Shetley finalist, Toronto Argonauts Guard, Dan Ferroni. The Shetley nominees for Most Outstanding Defensive Player are from the West, Winnipeg Blue Bombers linebacker, Tyrone Jones. From the East, versatile Hamilton Tiger Cats defensive back, Paul Bennett. For Shetley, most outstanding Canadian honors, representing the West, sure-handed Winnipeg wide receiver, Joe Poplowski. And bearing the standard for the East, record-holding double Shetley nominee, Tiger Cat Paul Bennett. The nominee for Shetley Outstanding Player of 1985. From the West, electrifying BC wide receiver Mervyn Fernandez. The Eastern nominee, the record setting quarterback from the Hamilton Tiger Cat, Ken Hobart. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bonsoir, Pierre. Comment allez-vous? Très bien, très bien, Ernie, and also very excited about this evening's program. I think it's going to be a great one. Bonsoir, mesdames, messieurs. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Montreal. Bienvenue à Montréal. Merci, Pierre. And what better city for the 85 breakup game and the 33rd annual Shenley Award? Did you know, Pierre, that the first football game ever played in Canada was played right here way back in 1865? But everybody knows that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but did you know that our country's first football organization was formed in Montreal in 1891? It was the Canadian Rugby Union, l'Union Canadienne de Rugby. And also that the huddle was introduced to Canadian football right here in Montreal in 1925. Ah, you're a connoisseur of football, Pierre. So you undoubtedly know that the first touchdown pass in Grey Cup history was also thrown in Montreal in 1931 by a Montreal player, no less. Mm -hmm. And then, speaking of passes, it's my pleasure now to pass 
The next few moments to Dan Sullivan of Montreal Trust, the exemplary organization which supervises all balloting for the Shenley Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames, messieurs, j'ai le plaisir de vous présenter le représentant de la famille Montreal Trust, Monsieur Dan Sullivan. Merci, Pierre. In these envelopes are the names of the 1985 Shenley Award winners and Canada Savings Bonds in the amount of $13,500 for presentation here this evening. Il me fait plaisir de vous annoncer que tous les votes ont maintenant été comptés. Le résultat de ce scrutin honnête représente la décision impartiale des mandataires pour cet honneur. Thank you, Pierre. Merci beaucoup, M. Sullivan. And right now, let's find out what is in these uh, first, the first of these envelopes as we discover who will be the 1985 most outstanding rookie. Here in action are the two finalists for the 1985 Shenley Rookie Honor. Nominated for the 85 Shenley Most Outstanding Rookie Award are Mike Gray of the BC Lions and Nick Benjamin of the Ottawa Rough Riders. Gray, BC Lions massive defensive tackle number 77, is the Western nominee for the Shenley Rookie of the Year honor. Mike Gray, numéro 77 des Lions de la Colombie-Britannique, est un plaqueur solide, rapide et qui frappe fort. First CFL season, Mike has racked up 13 quarterback sacks and latched on to three fumble recoveries, providing a dynamic new dimension to a tough BC defense that led the league in quarterback sacks. Finaliste de l'Ouest au titre de recrue par excellence, Shenley, Mike Gray, des Lions de la Colombie-Britannique. nominee for the 1985 Shenley Most Outstanding Rookie Award is number 68, offensive lineman Nick Benjamin of the Ottawa Rough Riders. The first overall 1985 Canadian draft pick, offensive lineman Nick Benjamin immediately assumed a prominent role in the Rough Riders' exciting run and shoot offense. A quiet music lover off the field, Nick is 6 feet 2 inches and 265 pounds of super aggressive motion, quickness and power between the lines. He is truly a force to be reckoned with, or avoided if possible. Représentant de l'Est au titre de meilleur recru des Rough Riders d'Ottawa, Nick Benjamin. Welcome the Shenley Western rookie nominee, Mike Gray. I would like to thank my teammates and the Lions and Shenley for a wonderful time and a wonderful year. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Et voici le finaliste de l'Est, Nick Benjamin. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the CFL and Shenley, nom Shenley uh, voters for uh, my support, support and my season. Thank you very much. And now to announce the winner of the 1985 Shenley Outstanding Rookie Award and the accompanying Canada Savings Bond, Mr. Don Hudson. Ladies and gentlemen, the most outstanding rookie and the winner of the 1985 Shenley Award is Michael Gray.
would like to first to thank the Lions organization and all my teammates for making my first year a very memorable year. Also, I'd like to thank my three counterparts who play on the line with me because they made my job very easy this year. <laughs> and I'd like to thank Shimley for the hospitality this week, making this a memorable week, a, a week that I'll remember for the rest of my life. Thank you very much. of tonight's awards, de Montréal, Monsieur Lucien Roland. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure to introduce my fellow Shenley trustees. From Toronto, Mr. Bill Daniel. From Ottawa, Mr. Sch Skip Armstrong. From Regina, Dr. Lloyd Barber. From Vancouver, Mr. Don Hudson. And a special welcome to the two new Chenley trustees. From Winnipeg, Mr. Jack McKay. And from Ida Montreal, Mr. Bernard Lamar. On behalf of all of us, I welcome you to the 33rd Chenley Award presentation and to Grey Cup Week here in glorious Montreal, Quebec. Bonne chance et merci beaucoup. Like all sports, football has its share of rules, and one of them seems to be that quarterbacks must always be devilishly handsome. And that's why when a quarterback first joins a new team, he does the smart thing and makes friends with his offensive linemen immediately. Because without them, he wouldn't stay devilishly handsome for very long. Well, luckily for their quarterbacks, we've got a couple of great offensive linemen for you tonight. And that we have uh, Ernie. The nominees for the 1985 Shelley Most Outstanding Offensive Lineman Award are Winnipeg Blue Bombers Nick Vizcaya and Toronto Argonauts Dan Ferroni. Winnipeg Blue Bomber All-Star Offensive Guard number 65, Nick Pastaya, is the Western nominee for Shenley's most outstanding offensive lineman. Un vétéran de 11 saisons, de numéro 65, Nick Pastaya, ouvre la ligne pour le à l'attaque Willard Reed. In the 11 years since he first joined the CFL, after a standout career at Simon Fraser University, Nick's skill and talent have made him an unqualified CFL star. In his six years with the Blue Bombers, Nick has added strength and durability to the Big Blue offensive line, and his consistent play was instrumental in the Bombers' 1984 Grey Cup victory. Western nominee for the Shenley Most Outstanding Lineman Award, Nick Pastaya of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Le choix du maître au titre de meilleur joueur de ligne à l'attaque, le numéro 69 des Argonauts de Toronto, Dan Ferroni. This is Dan's second consecutive Shenley nomination, and in 84 he was also named the Eastern Division's Most Outstanding Lineman. continues this year as the big anchor for the offensive line which gave up the fourth fewest sacks in the CFL. Dan's a great
aggressive play makes him a leader on the field, and he's an Ironman, too, having missed only two games since he began his career with Toronto in 1981. Dan Ferroni, the Argonauts of Toronto, the finalist of the left, who's the best player of the attack. Please welcome the Shenley Western Offensive Lineman nominee, Nick Biscaya. I'd like to, first of all, thank the fine people at Shenley Canada. They are very gracious hosts, and they've made this memorable occasion. And I'm especially pleased at their continued support of the CFL. I'd also like to thank the Winnipeg Blue Bomber organization. They've, uh, I like to feel, gave me a new lease on my career after spending the first five years in the East with teams that didn't do very well. <laughs> and I'd also like to thank the report, uh, Football Reporters of Canada for enabling me to be here today. Thank you. Et le finaliste de l'Est à ce même titre, Dan Ferron. Well, it's, it's going to be a great night tonight, and uh, I'm very excited. I'd like to wish Nick the best of luck. And Mom, don't you worry, Shenley's really taking care of me well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're all set in all. I think your coach looks more reassured than you are. <laughs> to announce the winner of the 1985 Shenley Outstanding Offensive Lineman Award and present the $2,000 Canada Savings Bond from Toronto, Mr. Bill Wagner. Merci beaucoup, Pierre. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the 1985 Shenley Award for the Outstanding Offensive Lineman of the Year goes to Nick Bastilla. Once again, thanks to the Winnipeg Blue Bomber organization, particularly those individuals that I play alongside, the other offensive linemen, their humor makes the game fun for me. Their continuing support makes it uh, easy, easy to enjoy myself. And I like to think of this award as being a group award. And I'd also like to thank, special thanks, to my wife, Burl. <laughs> and don't forget the two little ones, Amarita and Kalinda at home. Daddy says hi. Um, I know sometimes you think that you're at home with a crazy man during the football season. <laughs> Believe me, it's the tension, it's the pressure, but I want to let you know that I appreciate it beyond mere words. Thank you for being there when I need you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. offensive football team in the world and never win a thing unless you stop the other team from scoring more points than you do and that's why great football teams are built around great defenses and tonight Shenley honors two outstanding defenders that they are early really finalists au titre de joueur défensif par excellence en 1985 the nominees for the Shenley most outstanding defensive player honors are Tyrone Jones of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and Paul Bennett of the Hamilton Tiger Cats Number 35 of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers is the Western nominee for the Stanley Outstanding Defensive Player Award.
With 11 quarterback sacks in 85, number 35, Tyrone Jones, continued right where he left off in the Bombers' 84 breakup year, when he garnered league all-star honors and was named the most valuable player in the 84 breakup game. A hard-hitting linebacker, Tyrone's great football skills, helped the tough Winnipeg defense to lead the CFL in fewest first downs allowed. player on and off the field, a Western All-Star, and the Western nominee for the 1985 Stanley Most Outstanding Defensive Player Award, Winnipeg Blue Bombers' Tyrone Jones. Représentant de la chapitre de meilleur joueur défensif, le numéro 27 des Tiger Cats de Hamilton, Paul Bennett. At 31 years of age, Paul Bennett, an All-Canadian All-Star, continues his assault on the record books and a premier defensive back in country turner. 1985 has been a banner year for Paul. Tied to the league lead in interceptions, holder of the record for longest interception return of the year and culminating with his selection in two Stanley categories, defense and outstanding Canadian. leader with a capacity to make an average defense great and a magnificent performer always, Paul Bennett, Eastern nominee, Shenley's Most Outstanding Defensive Player Award. A warm Shenley welcome to the Western Defensive nominee, Tyrone Jones. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very nice pleasure to be here in the nice city of Montreal. I'm going to wish my friend and counterpart, Mr. Paul Bennett, the best of luck in his nomination and also in the game to Coach Don Matthews, Coach Al Bruno, and the Hamilton Tiger Kite. I would like to pronounce you're the best teams in Canada. Do the best. I'm going to be at the game. Give us a good show. Thank you. Maintenant, le finaliste de l'Est au titre de meilleur joueur défensif des Tigers de Hamilton, Paul Bennett. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Hamilton Tiger Cat organization. Uh, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be standing here tonight. They had great insight. I thank you very much. <laughs> And to my defensive <laughs> teammates in particular, I don't know how a team could play so sweet and be stinking so bad all year. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, the winner of the 1985 Shenley Outstanding Defensive Player Award will be announced by Dr. Lloyd Barber of Regina. Dr. Barber. Ladies and gentlemen, the uh, Shenley Most Outstanding Defensive Player for 1985 and the winner of a $2,000 Canada Savings Bond is Tyrone Jones. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't have an acceptance speech ready tonight, but I would like to thank the Winnipeg Football Organization, along with the coaching staff, management, especially Coach Murphy for coming back after all the duress and stress that he had to go through and lead us through the second half of the season. I'd like to thank Shinley, Football Reporters of Canada, for nominating me and for offering me the award. I'd like to say thank you very much. It's been a very exciting evening. Thank you.
back for a moment to Drake Up Day 1970. Can you remember what you were doing, where you were, as you watched the exciting culmination of the 1970 CFL season? Well, there's a group of people with us tonight who know exactly where they were on that momentous day. They were out there on that Drake Up field at CNE Stadium running, tackling, blocking, and catching their way to a heady drink from Earl Grey's Hallowed Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the members of the 1970 Montreal Alouettes Grey Cup team. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us tonight in Montreal, and thank you for being with us here at the Schindler Awards presentation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, mesdames, messieurs, s'il vous plaît, accueillez comme il se doit, please welcome Mr. Jim Taylor, president of the Football Reporters of Canada and the leader of the 88 Schindler nominators from across Canada. Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Pierre. Yes, there are 88 members of the Football Reporters of Canada who voted for the Schindler Award this year. It's a job we take very seriously. It's never an easy job, which in itself is a tribute to the Canadian Football League because the teams keep finding such new and such great talent. We do worry about it, except tonight, because by the time we get to the final, we know that no matter who wins or who loses, there isn't a coach in the Canadian Football League who wouldn't kill to have the five guys who finished second. Thank you very much. <laughs> The CFL would not have enjoyed its tremendous success through the years were it not for the great Canadian players who have given us so many great memories. Now, we have with us tonight two of the finest players in the league. They are truly outstanding Canadians. Yes, Ernie, may I present the nominees for the Shenley Most Outstanding Canadian Award, Joe Poplowski of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and Paul Bennett of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Number 71, Joe Poplowski, Winnipeg Blue Bombers slotback, is the Western nominee for the Shenley Most Outstanding Canadian for 1985. the Shenley Outstanding Canadian Award in 1981 and a finalist in that category last year, Joe ranked fourth in the league with 75 pass receptions and 1,271 yards and six touchdowns. A Canadian and Western All-Star in 84, Joe also won Western Division Most Outstanding Canadian Honors in the Bombers' breakup year. Winnipeg Blue Bombers Joe Poplowski, Western nominee for the 1985 Shenley Most Outstanding Canadian Player Award. <laughs> Paul Bennett, numéro 27 des Tiger Cats de Hamilton, est le finaliste de l'Est au titre de joueur canadien le plus remarquable en 85. <laughs> Here he is again, folks, number 27, Paul Bennett, our double Shinley nominee, and a man with a kind of CFL career most kids dream about. In a nine-year career, Paul has racked up all-star honors to go with his 1983 selection as Outstanding Canadian. And this year, he was an integral part and spiritual leader of one of the best secondaries in the league. The CFL's punt return record holder, an all-around all-star, a versatile defensive leader and offensive threat, the Eastern nominee for Shenley's most outstanding Canadian award, 
Paul Bennett of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Ladies and gentlemen, the Western nominee for the most outstanding Canadian, Winnipeg's Joe Poplowski. Thank you very much. It is a real pleasure to be here this evening, and so I'd like to thank Shenley of Canada, the CFL Reporters of Canada, and of course the Winnipeg Football Club, especially my teammates and my darling wife, Darlene. Thank you very much. This is getting to be a habit encore là pour représenter l'Est des Tiger Cats de Hamilton, Paul Bennett. Thank you. At this particular time, I'd like to also thank Shenley for adding a very classy night to the CFL. It's greatly appreciated. And also, uh, and just on a small note, that uh, you know, football is a very tough game, as we all realize. And there was none tougher for me than about 12 months ago. And I'd like to thank my wife, Barbara, and our two children, Marie and Melissa, for hanging tough and giving me the confidence that I needed. Thank you. And to make the presentation for the Shenley Outstanding Canadian of 1985, Monsieur Lucien Roland, de Montréal. Merci, Pierre. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to give you the 1985 Shenley Most Outstanding Canadian Player, Paul Bennett. Thank you very much. Uh, obviously, uh, unbelievable honor for me to be here tonight. Uh, you know, it's, I'm just I'm overwhelmed and thrilled. I know it's uh, there's a lot of things I probably would like to say, uh, but uh, there's nothing more that I could say to express how I feel, or at least as eloquently as I feel right now, than just to say thank you very much, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. and a special Henry presentation right after this. Canadian football tradition, but here's another Shenley tradition I enjoy, our annual opportunity to meet the contestants for Miss Grey Cup. It is our pleasure now to introduce the Miss Grey Cup contestants to you. And here they are, beginning with Miss BC Lion, Judy Laurie. Judy is a professional figure skater and a full-time sociology student at the University of British Columbia. Étudiante de troisième année en sociologie, elle est juge en patinage artistique. Miss Lyon de la Colombie-Britannique, Judy Laurie. And this is Miss Edmonton Eskimo, Colleen Springer. A student, Colleen, is presently attending the University of Alberta. And she's a part-time aerobics instructor, Miss Edmonton Eskimo, Colleen Springer. Miss Calvary Stampeder is Pam Moreau, a part-time business student and secretary at Mount Royal College. Étudiante, secrétaire, dessinatrice de mode, Miss Stampeder de Calgary, Pam Moreau. <laughs> Miss Saskatchewan Rough Rider, Lisa Hamernick. Lisa teaches Ukrainian dancing. She's also a psychology graduate and is currently working on a degree in biology. An outdoors enthusiast, Miss Saskatchewan Rough Rider, Lisa Hamernick. And here's Mrs. Winnipeg Blue Bomber, Suzanne Delorme. Suzanne is a hairstylist and enjoys dancing. Miss Winnipeg Blue Bomber is learning French. This bus, Suzanne. Suzanne Delorme, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Winnipeg. <laughs> and this is Miss Toronto Argonaut, Mary Ryder. Mary has graduated in physical education from the University of Western Ontario. A ballet dancer and swimmer, Miss Toronto Argonaut, Mary Ryder. And here is Miss Hamilton Tiger Cat, 
Linda Condon, presently in her first year at Mohawk College. And also an advertising student, Miss Hamilton Tiger Cat, Linda Condon. Mademoiselle Rough Riders d'Ottawa, Julie Thibault, en première année de psychologie à l'Université d'Ottawa. A photographer, Miss Ottawa Rough Rider, Julie Thibault. Miss Montreal Concord is Carol Langlois. She will graduate in December from Champlain Regional College as a photographer. And she's looking forward to a career in promotion. Mademoiselle Montréal Concord, Carol Langlois. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1985 Miss Grey Cup contestant. <laughs> Ladies, from all of us, one song. In our audience this evening are the head coaches of the nine CFL teams, but we especially would like to introduce the coaches who will be battling it out on Sunday. The coaches, Don Matthews of the BC Lions and Al Bruno of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Gentlemen, would you stand, please? Al Bruno, Don Matthews, good luck, gentlemen, on Sunday. Bonne chance, monsieur. Au match de la break. It takes great coaching, talented players, extreme dedication, brilliant execution, and yes, a little luck for a team to make it to the Grey Cup. The two teams who will face each other this Sunday have all those qualities and more. Therefore, we would like to welcome now the 1985 Grey Cup players in our audience. First of all, from the BC, from Vancouver, the BC Lions. Over there. <laughs> From Hamilton, the Tiger Cat. The great teams of every era have distinctive personalities. Take the Ottawa Rough Riders between 1958 and 1970. They were there, they called them the giant killers. Some of them tough little guys who fought and clawed, who found a way, any way, to beat you. During that 13-year period, the Ruffies won three great cups, and it's no surprise that those years also encompassed the career of one of the greatest Rough Riders to ever play the game. He was the epitome of the tough little guy, a hard-charging running back who never let up and always found a way to beat you. And more than a decade after his retirement, he still holds many Rough Rider and CFL rushing records including the CFL Sonial game rushing record of 287 yards for one game played here in Montreal on October 10, 1960, in which he scored four touchdowns. He was a team leader, twice honored with the Jeff Russell Memorial Trophy for his courage, fair play, and sportsmanship. In 1960, he was named the Shenley Outstanding Canadian, and in 1977, he was inducted into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame, an outstanding career for an outstanding man. Et pour faire cette présentation spéciale Shenley, voici le fiduciaire d'Ottawa, M. Skip Armstrong. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, it is my very great privilege and honor tonight to present the special Shenley Award to a remarkable athlete, a legend from Ottawa, Number 11 from the Ottawa Rough Riders, an exceptional, outstanding running back, Mr. Ron Stewart. Thank you, Skip. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for that warm welcome. I promised my daughter I'd wave to her. Hi, Melissa. May I, first of all, congratulate all the nominees for their outstanding performances this season. And may I say how much fun it's been for me to be a part of football for so many years. And I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank the, the many men of the Ottawa Rough Riders for a long and rewarding 
association with the club over the years. Thank you so much. And thank you especially for giving a little guy a chance to play. <laughs> Uh, to us over the past few days, but most of all, gentlemen, thanks for the memories. Thank you. When we come back, the most outstanding pair. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome CFL Commissioner to Commissaire du Football Canadien, Monsieur Doug Mitchell. Thank you very much, Pierre. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Canadian Football League, I would like to congratulate each and every finalist and award winner on this, their night. A night which has become very special, not only to the players, but to the league. All of you have made a significant contribution and brought identity to our league with your outstanding achievements. This night, the 33rd of its kind, is the envy of every professional sports league. In recognition of the outstanding contribution which Shenley has made to the Canadian Football League, I would like to call on the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Don McNaughton, to accept a special presentation from the Canadian Football League. I don't, now I know how the fellows that have spoken before feel. <laughs> I don't know what to say, except uh, thank you very much. Right. On behalf well, that the CFL continues to have such a large and happy impact on the lives of Canadians is due in no small part to the dedication and work of people like yourself, Mr. Commissioner, and you, Mr. McNaughton. We thank you for your remarks this evening. And now for the most outstanding player of 1985. Mervyn Fernandez of the BC Lions and Ken Hobart of the Hamilton Tiger Cats are the nominees for the 1985 Stanley Most Outstanding Player Award. British Columbia Lions receiver number 24, Mervyn Fernandez is the Western nominee for Shenley's Most Outstanding Player Honor. Dwarven Mervyn Fernandez has had four outstanding seasons with the Lions, setting new club receiving records each year. Mervyn Fernandez, arguably the most feared deep threat in the league today with 95 catches for 1,727 yards and 15 TDs in 1985. Le receveur soulève les foules. Sa rapidité et ses fins en ont fait un artisan de premier ordre dans les succès des Lions de la Colombie-Britannique de cette saison. Canadian All-Star 
Bauer Shenley rookie finalist in 82 and the Western nominee for the 1985 Shenley Most Outstanding Player Award, Swervin Mervin Fernandez of the BC Lions. Nominated in speed for the Shenley Most Outstanding Player Award is Hamilton Ken Hobart. Quarterback Ken Hobart, number four, is a 25-year-old Idaho native and a first-year CFLer by way of Denver Gold of the USFL and the Edmonton Eskimos. Avec les joueurs toutes étoiles à Idaho State. Il possède le talent et la taille ainsi que la rapidité. Ce sont toutes des qualités qui l'ont aidé à conduire les Tricats à la première place dans l'Est. Mobile et avec une strong arm, Ken was a threat to run every time he had the ball. And run he did, setting a rushing record for CFL quarterback and compiling the third best yardage figure among all CFL ball carriers. Electrifying field captain in the mold of other CFL grades. Ken Hobart, Eastern nominee for the 1985 Stanley Most Outstanding Player Award. Ladies and gentlemen, receivers Callan Pare and Western nominee for the Most Outstanding Player, Mervyn Fernandez. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank the CFL, uh, the sports writers of the CFL and the Shinleys for uh, voting me in tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank George Dixon, who's done a fine job with us, and I'd just like to say thank you. Ada Hamilton, the detenteur du record for the gain au sol par un quart en une saison, the joueur le plus remarquable dans l'Est, the Hamilton Ken Hobart. Thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to thank Finley for sponsoring this first class act. Uh, second of all, I'd like to thank the Tiger Cat organization, and especially my teammates. It sure wouldn't be the same if you weren't here. And last of all, I'd like to thank you people out there on the island who are great supporters of the CFL. Thank you. The Finley Award to the most outstanding player is traditionally awarded by the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Finley Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, Mesdames, Messieurs, de la compagnie Shenley Canada, Monsieur Don McNaughton. Thank you, Fred, of fellow football fans. Shenley Canada is proud to support the CFL in honoring its finest players. And now, the most outstanding player in Canada for 1985, le joueur le plus efficace en Canada pour 1985. Merv Fernandez. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to thank God for giving me my talent and to make it to this level, high level of competition, which is the CFL Football League. Um, I'd like to thank my lovely wife, Brenda, who's sitting in the front row tonight, who's given me a lot of support and things aren't always as easy as they are tonight. I wouldn't say easy. easy. <laughs> <laughs> I was sweating it out back there, but... Uh, 
Um, I'd like to thank my players that are here, the BC fans. You guys are the reason that I'm here. I uh, hope we'll be at the Great Cup. Thank you. Congratulations, Dennis. Thank you. Good luck to the BC Lions and the Hamilton Tiger Cats and for this wonderful evening, Ken Richard. Merci à Stanley Canada d'avoir donné l'occasion de rendre hommage aux meilleurs athlètes de la Ligue canadienne. Merci, mesdames, messieurs, à notre prochain. Thank you, Ernie. Good evening, Merci. No secret that the league is having an attendance problem. Fans just aren't packing the stands the way they used to. With tonight's last word, here's broadcaster Danny Finkelman. The Canadian Football League is not in good shape. Only a couple of teams are making money, and with 10,000 seats unsold for Sunday's Grey Cup in Montreal, you know it's time for some heavy huddling. I like the CFL more than the NFL. It's more fluid, wide open, and the single point adds a lot. So does the unpredictable weather. But the NFL knows how to market its product. The CFL doesn't. To bring the CFL back to life, here's what has to be done. First, like the NFL, all CFL games must be played on the same day of the week. Scheduling all games on the same day builds fan enthusiasm throughout the week and generates gambling interest, which, believe me, has been critical to the success of the NFL. In England and Europe, they've known this from way back. They've been playing soccer every Saturday since the Magna Carta. Second, legalize gambling on the sport. Football is the perfect sport for betters. There should be a weekly national football sports lottery, government run. I know the federal government blew the first sports lottery, but this time they got to get people who understand gambling and football to develop and operate the pool. Sure, compared with the big lotteries, prizes would be small, but there'd be a lot more excitement than watching those bimbos draw 41, 86, and 12 out of a revolving drum every weekend. The CFL must realize the Blue Jays are big and getting bigger. And each day, Canadian cable television is offering a wider variety of sports programming. The CFL must act now or prepare its own obituary. In Toronto, I'm Danny Finkelman. Talking about it because you're heading into the Grey Cup all this week. We're talking Grey Cup, Canadian big football game. The Shenley Awards are given out tonight. The best of the CFL. Let's go to Montreal right now. The two awards we're going to show you right now for members of the teams that will be given in the Grey Cup. Uh, CFL's outstanding Canadian player, Hamilton Tiger Cats defensive back. This is Paul Bennett. Congratulations, Paul. Way to go. Now, that's the Canadian player. The outstanding player, regardless of age, sex, nationality, political affiliation, this is the BC Lions leading receiver of the year, Mervyn Fernandes. Way to go, Mervyn. Okay, now both these guys represent the teams that are in the Grey Cup. And the highlight of this week, at least this Thursday's Grey Cup, anyway, was the fact that the two teams, they're in Montreal. You know what they did today? They met the press. Let's go to Montreal and meet the press. The Hamilton Tiger Cats hosted the media munch this morning. It's another opportunity for reporters to ask players questions they've been asking them all this week. With all of this going on, does it interfere with a player's concentration on the big game? You know, it's the, it's the, uh, you know, the media uh, breakfast this morning and that, hopefully, and the guy, you know, you guys will uh, stop bugging us for a little bit and we'll get down to work in the next couple of days. Dealing with all of the Grey Cup hype requires the same self-discipline as it takes to play the game. But it can be fun, too. Football players have big egos and they like this sort of stuff, you know, they like to be on TV and things like that. I don't think it's going to bother us because we got a veteran team and we come to win. You know, we didn't come to a party like we did last year. We come to win. And Don is talking about football. Sure are, David. The biggest football game of the year in Canada takes place Sunday in Montreal. For many fans, the game takes second place, however, to the parties, the drinks, and other festivities. Terry Walker has this preview of Grey Cup 85. The two teams have been working out in Montreal since Wednesday, preparing for the biggest game of the year. But they're not the only people warming up for the match. We're from Winnipeg and we know it's off your feet. Fans from across the country get involved in Grey Cup Week. All this week, various dinners, pageants, and other activities have been attracting record crowds. There are absolutely no tickets available. They're all sold out. There's a waiting list for every single one of them. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw some scalpers around, which is always a test of success. There is concern in some quarters that a lack of interest by Montrealers will mean thousands of no-shows at the game. But League Commissioner Doug Mitchell feels differently. Montreal has a, an attraction in itself. The Great Cup game is uh, Canada's greatest sports spectacular, so the combination of the two of them should make for a superb crowd. 
No matter what Mitchell says, some of these seats will be empty on Sunday, and those who don't show up could be missing history. After all, with the Grey Cup game being played under the dome in Vancouver the next two years, and with Montreal and Toronto planning to move inside, this could very well be the last cup game where weather could be a factor. Terry Walker, CBC News, Montreal. Well, last night was Shenley Awards Night in Montreal, and for Canadian players in the league, the big award was the Outstanding Canadian Award, and that went to the Hamilton Tiger Cats' Paul Bennett for the second time in three years. Was this your best year in the CFL, do you think? I think so. I think that uh, statistically wise and uh, peace of mind wise and and uh, team wise, every, you know, our defense with the 46, you know, interception setting a record. Uh, I think overall, uh, not only personally, but team wise, this was, was the best year that I've been associated with. If I had said to you a year ago that you would be standing on a stage <laughs> accepting a Chianli, what would you have said? Well, I, I probably would have fell down laughing, you know, but uh, it, it's just strange. You know, I, I really think that uh, this award tonight is you know is is something for people who other players and other people and other professions that if you get knocked down you know you can get back up and get right back to where you were before and for all the players past present and future uh, that uh, never got that second opportunity you know i'm here representing them tonight and of course the great cup game sunday afternoon here on windsor nine and you have to go with the hamilton tiger cats in this one well that may be the biggest football game in canada but the biggest football game in one taste of the year cup 85 live sunday afternoon holding off the town with a shotgun he spent a lifetime fighting for what he believed in and now the government's threatening to cut off the water to his farm municipal act it says what you do is wrong more expand more taxes Junk, junk, junk. This is CBC Television, Windsor 9.